Hello everyone, I'm Matt Evans and welcome to Board Game Replay. In this series, we try to capture the experience of playing a board game by sitting down for a post-game discussion, talking about various elements of the game, and then during that discussion we're going to be cutting back to replay clips of moments that we found fun or exciting. Now today we're going to be playing Abyss, designed by Bruno Cathala and Charles Chevalier. Now Abyss is a little bit of a different style game than we normally feature in this series. You know, normally we feature like a really high interaction, a very thematic, you know, dice rolling, shouting, that sort of type game. Now this this is more of a Euro style game in that it doesn't have quite as much of the theme and stuff going on, but there's a lot of uh, really good really good mechanical elements going on here, and I think there's going to be a lot to discuss. So even though the the traditional interaction that we feature in the series might be a little different, I think there's still a lot here to to discuss, and I think it should still work well for our format. All right, so with that being said, we're going to get to this game in just a bit. But before we do, I'd like to offer a rules overview for those of you who are not familiar with this game. But if you are already familiar with the rules, I'm going to put a link up here, as well as down in the description of the video. You can click that and skip right by it. Otherwise, we're going to get to the rules here in just a second. All right, so the object of the game in Abyss is to become the king of Abyss, and you're going to do that by gaining the most influence points by the end of the game. Now, thematically, what's happening here is you're going to be uh, recruiting various allies throughout the depths and throughout the council and things like that to recruit these lords, and those lords are going to help you gain influence and to become the king, basically. That's what you're going to be doing. And the game is broken down into three phases, and turns go in clockwise order. The first phase of the game is called Plot at Court. It's an optional phase of your turn, and there's a lord track down here, and basically, if there are any empty spaces, you can pay a pearl, which is one of the game's currencies, or which is the game currency, and you can flip a card from this deck and fill any empty spaces once per pearl. Again, that's optional. I'll get more to that in just a little bit. The second phase of the game is called Take One Action, and that's basically where everything happens in this game. There's three different actions that you can take. You must take one of them. You can explore the depths, which is a way for you to gain allies uh, throughout this track. You can request support from the council, which is another way to get allies, and again, I'll explain the two of these in a second. And then the really thing, the main thing you're trying to do here is you're trying to recruit lords. That's the third thing that you can do. You can do one of those three things. After you've done one of those three things, there's one more phase called control locations. And this is where if you have, if you've gained a third key during your turn, you're then immediately going to take control of a location. That's going to make more sense in just a little bit, but you can see, as I mentioned, recruiting lords is kind of what you're trying to do in this game. So some of these lords have key icons on top of them. This guy has three, for example, one, one, one. And like I said, if you ever end your turn and you have three of those, you're going to take control of a location. I'm going to get more to that in just a little bit, but that's sort of the, the core of the game. These, these locations have end game scoring conditions on them that you're going to want to try to grab by gaining keys from acquiring the, these lords. That's sort of the gist of the game. In order to get these lords, you have to have the allies. So I'm going to explain what you do. So the first thing you can do, like I mentioned, is explore the depths, which is this track up here. When you go to explore the depths, you're going to flip these allied cards, which uh, are numbered here. I'll just grab a bunch of them to show you first. <laughs> allied cards look like this. They are numbered. They have numbers one through five, and there are five different colors, the same ones that you can see here along the board. And so during the Explore the Depths phase, you're going to flip one of these over and put it on this track. Now everybody in clockwise order, if it's my turn, everybody to my left in clockwise order is going to get an opportunity to buy that, uh, that, that ally, and they can buy it for one pearl. Let's say the first person to my left says, yeah, I want to buy that. They're going to give me a pearl. So I'm going to gain a pearl from them. They're going to take the card, and we're going to flip the next one over. And we're going to do the same thing again, except each player can only purchase a card once. So if somebody's already bought a card for me, they don't get another shot. It goes to the next player first. Now they can buy it for two pearls. If they buy it, and then the same thing happens again, and now the next person to purchase it, it costs three pearls. So it's an interesting mechanism where players get to buy from you first. Uh, they get an opportunity to buy first, even though it's your turn, but you gain the money from it if they do buy it. Now, if it goes all the way around the table and nobody wants to take one of those cards, you can actually get it for free. And just to give you a quick idea of what you're going for here, typically, ideally, you want the highest value allies you can get. You want the highest number, and you know, depending on what lord you might be trying to acquire at the time, it might um, determine what color you're going for, but the highest value is, is really ideal. You want to get the highest ones you can. Now, if nobody wants it, if it goes all the way around the table, nobody wants to purchase it, I don't want to take it for free, I'm just going to flip another card, and we're going to repeat the same thing all the way around. If, if people keep saying, nope, I don't want it, no, I don't want it, it's going to go all the way down. And I can keep flipping them until I get to this very last slot. When I flip one for this slot, I just get it. I don't have a choice. Nobody gets to buy it. It just comes straight to me. But since I did that, 
I also get to gain a pearl. So it's sort of a risk reward thing. Like I can keep laying out cards, keep giving my opponents opportunities to purchase, you know, essentially cherry pick the, the, the best cards because they get the first choice. And then I'm taking a gamble on this last slot. I'm just basically drawing a card and keeping it. I might get something good, I might get something bad, but as a reward for that, I get an extra pearl for going all the way to the end. Now, as soon as I acquire a card during this phase, my turn is over. So I just acquired one here at the end from drawing it and keeping it. Or if I decided, you know, if, not, if all of these here hadn't even been there, and I decided, you know, after everybody passed on this one, if I just wanted to keep it, I would take that one, and my turn would end, we'd go on to the next player. Well, let's just say, hypothetically, I kept these out here, and I did just what I did before. I, I took that last card. After somebody's turn ends, any cards that were left here that weren't taken are going to actually get put down here into the council, and they're going to match their relevant colors. So red is going to go to red, purple to purple, and so on and so forth. And this is the this is one of the other actions that you can take down here that I'm, I'm setting up. Anytime someone explores the desk, any of the leftover cards are going to end up here in the council. And when you request support from the council, you basically just take one stack. There might be multiple cards in here, there might only be one, but basically you just take one stack of cards from here, add it to your hand, and then your turn ends. And now the last action that you can take, again, is to recruit a lord. So throughout the game, you're going to use the cards that you've been acquiring, use the allies that you've been acquiring to hopefully recruit some of these lords. In order to recruit a lord, you have to pay their cost in relevant colors and values. So let's use this oracle as an example here. This has a cost of eight and has a purple symbol and one of these bubbles. So what that means is we're going to need to use a combination of purple cards and then one different color to, to exceed or to equal or exceed eight, and then we can recruit that lord. So that means I can spend as many purple uh, as I want, but then I have to have at least one different color. So I could do it like this. I could have two purple and a red. I could have three red and one purple. However I do it, it just has to match that exact number of different allied races. And the number has to equal or exceed eight. Now, if I'm actually short, let's say I only had six right here, I can actually use pearls to make up the difference. So as long as I meet the requirements of the different colors, I can then spend pearls to make up the difference. So this would just cost me two pearls and I could still recruit that lord. Now again, let's say I spent these, I would then, after I recruit the Lord, I, I take the lowest value card that I used and I keep this. This becomes an affiliated ally. I'm going to get more to that in just that's a little bit, probably towards the end. And that's just, that's an end game scoring thing and I'll explain then. I would then take the other two cards that did not become allies and I discard them. Now I'm going to acquire this Lord who, if you'll notice here, has a special ability that says, during your turn, you may discard one stack of cards from the council. So this council up here, on, on future turns, I can basically use this now just as a free ability to throw one of them away, make it a little bit more difficult for other players, kind of a nice passive to have. And a lot of the lords, many of them have uh, abilities that do things like that, whether it's passive or instant, like this little arrow right here. I mean, this is an ability that happens uh, on the turn that you acquire it. You know, some of them um, don't have powers at all, like this, this shepherd card has nothing at all. But using this oracle as an example, I'm going to grab him. And then you'll notice there's also a key symbol on here, and then some influence points. So at the end of the game, this character is going to be worth five influence points, but I also get a key. And I'm going to go into that key in just a second. After you, after you recruit a lord, you slide all the other ones down, and then your turn would end. And then you might have noticed there's some, some pearl symbols here on the board, similar to the one up there. And what that means on is th this stack of lords does not automatically replenish. On future turns, like, if I were just to recruit that lord, my turn is now over. We go on to the next player who may decide to recruit this lord, and so on and so forth. And they just keep sliding down. Somebody recruits this lord, they slide down, and that sort of thing. And so somebody recruits a lord and reveals these two pearls. They are now, whoever does it, is going to now acquire two pearls, and then they are going to slide everything else down and then refresh the, the stack of lords. And again, remember I mentioned at the beginning, you can also, the only other way to replenish this outside of, of getting this to be revealed is using that optional step at the beginning of your turn where you can plot at court, spend pearls to flip over uh, lords here. But anyway, I want to go into more detail about what the keys do and how the locations work because that's, that's a lot of the meat of the game. So to explain how locations and keys work, let's say that my turn, I, on a previous turn I had acquired these two lords, I had them under my control, and then I had just recruited this third lord, uh, giving me a third key. Now, the third phase of my turn is control locations, where it says if I have three keys, I have to gain a location, I have to take control of one. 
Now at the start of the game, there's always one location revealed, but only one, and this is the barracks. This says, it's basically at the end of the game, two influence points for each of your soldier lords plus seven. Now I don't have any soldier lords, I only have these three, so that would probably be a bad one for me to take. So I have the other option of drawing from this stack. I can draw anywhere from one to four from this stack, keeping one and then distributing the rest out face up for other players to potentially choose from on their turns. So it's a nice, it's another risk reward element of the game. There's a fair amount of that here. Do I want to draw four and give myself a lot of options and then give everybody else options as well? So let's say I want to play it safe. I'll draw three and I'll look through them. So this first one here is a sanctuary. It says for each of your affiliated allies from the jellyfish race, I get three for each of them and then plus an additional four. So this is one of the ways that affiliated allies come in at the end of the game for scoring. Uh, it's also, we also got the jail, 15 influence points minus the number of lords you have. That's an interesting one because I have three lords right now. That's, that's a pretty good amount of points, 12 points, but I don't know. If I require too many lords throughout the game, this is going to go down in value. And then uh, the closed tower says three influence points for each of your lords with one or more keys. That's a pretty good one because all my lords here have keys. Let's say I wanted to take this again. I'm going to put these, I'll distribute these again. I'll put them out for other players to choose from. And then interesting enough, when you when you take control of a location, any of the lords that you're gating keys from, they're going to get covered up. So I'm going to put this location here showing that I now have taken control of it. But you'll notice this actually covers their abilities. Which is, which is by design. So now those, those characters, even though they had passive abilities, most of them did, they now go away. The only thing that these lords count for is their influence points and the fact that they, they obviously have these keys because, um, because of here. But their keys are essentially out of the game. I can't use them again to gain other locations. They are, they're basically tapped out. All right, so a few last things that I want to mention. The first of which I skipped over at the beginning here, and that was the threat track. Uh, this threat track represents the monsters that are going to come out of this deck here, the ally deck, during the exploring the depths phase. During your turn, if you happen to flip over one of these cards and it's a monster, you have the option of immediately fighting the monster, ending your turn, and collecting the uh, reward based on wherever this, this token is. Or you can pass and continue on flipping cards just as you would normally, letting the other players bid on them and so forth. But whenever you pass on that monster, the threat is increasing and it goes up here. So this is going to keep climbing and climbing as players ignore it until one player finally decides to fight the monster. They're then going to collect the reward here. So the rewards at the beginning start out very basic. One pearl or one of these monster tokens. These monster tokens are basically uh, anywhere from two to four victory points. So just sort of an, an, extra, an extra bonus for you. You can even go up here and eventually start getting keys, pearls and keys, pearls, victory points, that sort of thing. And whenever you get these key tokens, these work just like a key, as if it was on a lord. Whenever you would, basically, once you get three of these, let's say you had two of these and one lord, you would cover up the lord like you would normally, and then just discard these two keys back here. So that's pretty much the whole game. Players are going to keep taking turns in clockwise order until one of them has recruited their seventh lord. Then each other player is going to get one more chance for one final turn. And then the game is over and you tally up your scores. And your scorecard looks like this. You're going to get points for the locations you control, the lords you control, the uh, affiliated ally, the highest value affiliated ally you control of each race, any monster tokens you have, you add them all together, and that's your score. All right, so I think that pretty much covers it. I think I've explained enough. If you certainly have any questions about this or anything was unclear, feel free to ask me in the comments below. Well, with that being said, why don't we get to the game? Alright, 69. I am the worst. Actually, that was a pretty close scoring uh, game. Look at that. Point. That was surprisingly okay. close. I, I totally thought I, like, completely no. lost that game. You got second place. I know. <laughs> Jeremy won by just a and hair. And beating too. Jeremy's, like, impossible anyway. So, it, I mean. it is. Like, Jeremy wins every game. But I thought that was super good. lucky, but sure. No, that was good, man. That was well played. I think you, that you monster had, draw was huge. Yeah. Oh, you, that, you that one turn where you got exactly the keys you wanted. Yeah, that was, that was pretty good. Your, your red leaders were, like, 
they're, demolishing it uh, at the yeah. beginning of the game and slowed us all down. So I think that probably had a lot. To do I lost that, two but. two turns because of it. One, yeah. One I couldn't buy something that I wanted to on the mm -hmm. turn, and the other one you you made me discard literally half my hand. I had I picked up a stack of six cards, and I had to take. I, I already had five, and I was like, all right, well, this goes pretty much half my hand goes back out there. <laughs> Sorry, Brian. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It just has to be all the same that colors. Guy. You're so awesome. Every, immediately discard down to six, everybody. Everybody. Whew. Everybody in the club. At least Jeremy already has two keys. This guy's not going to last long. No, he doesn't have a key. Oh, really? That's not good. Yeah. That so, guy's really strong. So rugged. I had, okay, really I had strong. a completely empty hand, two turns. For yeah. you to have 70 by the end of the game, like you were picking up speed yeah, you got really you, quick. Yeah, you were slow at the start. You had some issues at the beginning, but you got a lot pretty quick. I had a I had a few of these. You did. You did yeah. indeed. Just I had a good amount, but I spent them. I spent like <laughs> yeah, a bunch. That's, of that was my issue. Is that I needed to figure out ways of spending them. I'm surprised getting rid of those. Do anything with that at the end? Like I think for it's a every, tiebreaker. For yeah, but like for every three, you get a point. Yeah. Most games, the currency is always you, adding something. Yeah. Can you sell yeah, cards on the board and take another action? What do you mean? So you cards. can add ones to the board. You can add like one of the first actions you take on your turn. The the. There's only one, you only do one thing in your turn, but there is an optional thing before your turn begins, basically spend where you can coin. spend a coin, a pearl, to flip to, a card. To flip a card, but just you so, can't get rid of, I thought you, no, there was an action no, to get rid of them. just to add one to the track. Oh, all right. Yeah. All right. It's a weird thing, I've never done it. I've played this game about five times, I've never done it. No, no. Interesting thing, you guys like your first time playing this one, but I figured it's one of our first Euro games that we've sort of made a video of. Yeah. It's, it doesn't have the same kind of interaction, but I think there's still a lot to talk about. Like. You know, in the way that we like to dissect games when we finish. You know? I think for the lack of integrated theme, uh, the lack of that is completely made up by the amazing art yeah. and awesome colors yeah. and the easy to understand symbols. It, the yeah. actor was really smart. Like, if you've got a you know one of these locations that has a trident on it, it represents a. It gives you credit for a lord, and the color means it's going to give you something for the yellow lord. So it's right. actually yeah. really intuitive. And then the starfish-based ones here, where Jeremy's got one over there. Sort of it, yeah, it, it um, has to do with these guys. So it, it all—it's—it's—it's it's, it's definitely smart iconography. And as far as explaining the game goes, like I explained it in maybe like five, ten minutes, and then like you kind of just get the flow of the game really quick. Like after one round, it, you know, you're already you're already understanding it. There's no major complexity over the top. It's just kind of you understand the basics of the game, and then you just kind of tactically choose the the cards as they come out. So it's. No, it plays really smoothly. For a new game that would, the rest of us just started, yeah. there yeah. was surprisingly very no. little questions that we had had to ask. Yeah. It was just, yeah. you know, a few nitpicky things, or sometimes you you run into. Usually, you find it where it's like, Jeremy wait, I it, found yeah. that one weird thing that could break the game, or we need to figure <laughs> this out. We that didn't find come it on the here. internet. But <laughs> the one thing we had to look up what happens when you go, what is it assassinate? Assassinate. Yeah, the assassin sure. card is a little tricky. And to clarify that, yeah, when I I bought this. And where I recruited this lord, and it says each of your opponents must turn one lord of your choice 90 degrees. That lord counts only for its IP. And what that means, it actually takes the key off. It's like you're taking the key right off of them, and but it does still count their their race. Like so, their their race stays, and you know, and, the, and taking the key off is not just during the game. It's also yeah, for, it's for post scoring. game. Like, scoring. They just don't yeah. have a key anymore. So, but That's they like, still. Count as a leader and a color. Yeah, yeah they still count as a color and points. Yeah. yeah, so it's not it's not terrible, but it, it helped us. It helped me combat Jeremy's frustrating double combat ability. Yeah. Two guys yeah. out with combat <laughs> abilities that were just pushing us. Well, once I was able to negate those abilities for myself, it there was a card I was thinking about getting that. Yeah, you were negated kind of get that. Well, I'm gonna buy with my one card. <laughs> It's three. Oh, you're buying the assassin? Yeah. Oh, I love you so much. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Um, which one are you going to disable of Jeremy's? Is it's just one person, right? Everybody. Everybody disables. So it's it doesn't one. disable like the key it, and make your location go away. No, no, no. no. It's, it's, it just turns upside. Once these guys are there, their keys are irrelevant. The only thing that's relevant is victory points. No problem, Isaac. He doesn't care. It's only going to hurt Jeremy right now. Uh, but Jeremy has that really annoying power that that's. Yeah, but sucks. Isaac, you're not affected by it. I'm not affected by it. So <laughs> oh, it yeah, that's right. Matter. That's right. Yeah, so maybe it's so not a good idea to buy that. That's not a good idea. Yes. <laughs> Honesty. We're the worst. So yeah, by you buying that, the only thing it would have done is shut down Jeremy's annoying lord, which is the oracle. Anything. The oracle is your turn. You can discard a stack of cards from the council. It kind of slow your opponents down. You need to get those colors though. So yeah. Oh, you're gonna. That get was it. so funny. We were just. You were like, yeah, I think you should totally buy it. Wait, it has no effect on you. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
That's great. Do anything for me. Yeah. Buy a key. Okay. <laughs> I'll buy the three key and then cover them up instead. Uh. Yeah, I was gonna get that, and it didn't make any sense for me because it yeah. was just screwing over the two of you and it had nothing to do yeah. with me anymore. Which, if you look at the score, yeah. made sense. That yeah. totally made sense. <laughs> yep. Kept them behind, mm -hmm. and then. Now, and it's interesting too. There, there are six different, um, six different. What do they call them? Guilds. Six different guilds. It said races, but they're guilds. And they all, you guys, I'm sure, you, just from your first playthrough, you can see the differences in them. You've got the, obviously, the military ones are, oh, I'm going to get all their names wrong, but the military ones, the red ones, are all, Soldier. they do negative things to other people. Like, they're attacks, basically. They yeah. do something to, to slow people <clears throat> down. Uh, the, green what is money it, the, based. the green give you pearls in some way or another, whether it's you get pearls immediately or through for future rounds. The purples kind of do things with the council, like they trick the council, they give you extra council stacks, or like they like let you like swap things yeah, out. They're kind of like magical, stuff. you know? Diplomats. Um, diplomats, like the blue ones, or what are they called? The politicians. The blue ones are the politicians, politicians and they right. give you cheaper recruitments or do things with recruiting. Yep. The class. yellow doesn't have anything. They're the working class. They're just, they're, they generate it. They're, they're like generate some kind everything. of farmer, I read in the theme. Like they farm yeah. like this sar sargal sargasso or something like that they farm, and like that's their thing. So they're just high victory points and no don't and no effect with maybe sometimes they'll have a key yeah. on them or something. And then of course you've got these guys which are just sort of crazy <laughs> and have the location draws. Like they're basically there like political. Are nice. There's six total. I'm curious. Any no, there's there's a total of six ones. Those are the different ones. Uh, yeah, because we had the yeah. There's probably one that's worth six or seven or no, eight. Or no, that's it. We saw no, them that's all. it. We yeah. three. Yeah, because you had the one that was the worth the what the lowest mm. and you got to get three yeah. locations yeah drew three and then i picked whichever one yeah. i wanted i had the one that was worth four i could only get two and that guy's the one that you can only you just draw one and play. draw one keep it yeah that's what i drew for this one yeah, yeah. i took yeah. that guy if it was draw three and pick it but then i ended up replacing the one i took anyway yeah. so i it's guess all, yeah there's that tactical element to it where you pick like either you know you're going to draw three from here there's a, there's a fair amount of press your luck to this too because like when you get a location completed you're drawing one to four locations and then deciding, okay, do I really want to draw one to four? If I draw all four, I get way more choices, but then I'm giving my opponent's choices. Yeah. You know, and the exploring the depths, it's like, ah, oh, do I want to flip another card or just take this one now? Yeah. You know, it's... I was going to say, now that we played again, I feel like next, like, like Isaac was saying, he didn't have any trouble with colors, but I think a lot of us were just going till the end to get the pearl, which gave everybody else... The opportunity, the, opportunity. the opportunity to buy the exact color they need. Yeah, I yes. think we could have all played a little bit more defensively. Right. No, but... but um, I think that's just going to bring everybody's score down and not necessarily... No, I know. Uh, uh, right. No, no. I'm, I, I agree with you, though. I agree. I, I was just saying, like, agree with you. It, next time it would be more com more competitive and more things would... Like, you would see the value in that card more than you would... That's true. So, like, like where the combat ones were really high value, but, like, next game, if we're not buying a card every single turn, it doesn't really matter if you have to hold six cards. You probably only have right. four Right. We kind of got used to holding six cards in this game. We're like, whatever. Like, I don't care. Yeah. Yeah, right. Now we know, like, Three. yeah, we can deal with having six cards. It's not all about that. It's about making combos and... Yeah. And that sort of thing. Yeah, but we, to, to your point there, though, like, the more we flip these over, the more we're giving our opponents more choices yeah. for cards, but we're also giving ourselves the opportunity to make money. That's why it's an interesting mechanism yeah. for the game. It's like, I want to... Do you need money? Do you like, want to give your opponents cards? Like, do you want to try or... to maybe draw a monster and yeah. get two in yeah. a row and get a really good reward, like Jeremy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's that's such an interesting track. Like, there's three different levels going on there for risk-reward, you know? Yeah, I, I really want to get the color that I want, and also, I'm broke right now, and I really want to flip something that someone kind of wants that I don't really want. Maybe they'll pay me for it. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on in, like, a... It's a really, it's a really tight game, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, it's... It's three things that you can do, and it, it sort of, you know, and all the text, obviously all the real game happens on the cards and on the locations and stuff, but it's a, it's a really tight game. You never have to stop and go, wait, so what can I do now? Like, there's three things. It's really simple. Yeah. Uh, I Just from looking at the scores, and maybe this is just a fluke, the points from you and Brian were more diverse, but you also had the least points. That's very weird for a, a game... Usually, usually you want to diversify yourself as much as possible. Yeah, that's not necessary in this game. Yeah, you no, can go. Like, you can. I, yeah, yeah. You didn't have a single location. No, nope. get a single monster. Nope, that's, that's a good point. Yeah, didn't need I, to I do even it. said that at the beginning when I was explaining the rules. I was like, yeah, locations are kind of like a big part of the game, but you did fine without that. Yeah. If you think about it, it's almost like there's a rush strategy yeah. to it. Well, we were all. We're all kind of taking our time and sitting back, and Isaac was just like, "Hey, I got a card. You you had great cards that you yeah, were protected. Yeah, twelve and eleven cost. Like, you were protected from military people. You had those high costs, and you had a bunch of pearls. Like you were just riding through the game with like 
you know, with ease. Like, you didn't have yeah. any reason to go get locations, whereas the rest of us kind of wanted to get locations to sort of give us a strategy. You were just like, dude, I got a crap ton of pearls. I can do whatever I want. These go for a little bit more of the longer longer game. Yeah. Sorry, I apologize. These go for a little bit more of the longer game. Yeah. This, I need to get, I need to do this in one less turn. Yes. That yeah. I needed to. Yeah, because right? yeah. otherwise it'd be one less purchase for Jeremy. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I wouldn't have had the extra nine nine points. I mean, yeah. even just that one, that last purchase. Yeah. How hard was it for you to get that 12 cost one? No, not hard. not hard at all. And actually, yeah. it ended up pearls. that I didn't even have to... I it so happened that I didn't have to pay pay much for it, but I could have I could have yeah. paid out 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 of pocket. So for you it. did it in like one turn, couple turns. Uh, just I just it. needed like, a yellow card, so I had, I had I did it after one turn. That's worth twelve and cost ten. I needed I spent three turns getting the cards I yeah. needed. This cost ten. This is eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's this entire location. This lore. That's all it paid out. Yeah. It was the yeah. same exact as that, but I spent three turns getting it. No. Yeah. I mean, eight. you know. But this, the the other thing that I drew would not have helped me. It was it was I think it was the sanctuary one. Yeah, it, was, it was yeah. I had no purple one, so mm -hmm. I had no choice but that for mm -hmm. this. And that picks the crappiest card and doubles it. I so, was going you know. for that ex exact card uh, right before I was about to buy it as it was coming over to my turn. Yeah. You have to the minute that that card comes into play, you have to be. You have to know that you're ready to buy it in within a turn or two because somebody's going to grab them. They're like too good for them to stay out too too long. Yeah, those are really but that strong. goes that goes back to what you everyone was saying before about searching the depths and flipping the cards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was two turns where I was able to just sit and wait, and the card I usually bought from here to here. I spent I spent three three pearls on like a two cost card. Just people were like, I wonder color. why. I'm like, no, that's the, the fifth color. that's yeah. the fifth card I needed for the color, yeah. and then yeah. I got it the next turn. Yeah, it's you know? risk So the, the option Absolutely. was there. But somebody could have easily foiled that. They're like, Oh, I watched what you were buying. Yeah, I'm just gonna yeah. take this and I'm like, oh, that was hard. that's why you get first pick though. That's why you get first pick. Like it's when it's your turn and you're flipping the cards, everybody else gets a choice before you. So even if I really wanted it and I didn't want you to have it, there's nothing I can do about it. Oh, okay. Somebody yeah. out instead of bought it out from underneath you. I was trying to pay attention to Matt for a while just to see if I could, yeah, and after a while, like I couldn't, couldn't pay, I couldn't figure out the next card he was gonna buy. Mm -hmm. um, it's tough. I it's did tough. it once. I think I foiled you once for a card you were gonna buy. Oh, yes. I don't remember the circumstances. You stole, you stole the lawnmower from me. I think. <laughs> was that what it is? <laughs> oh no, you took you took that combat guy, right? No, was, I forgot which one you. Brian definitely yeah, well, stole. You stole that hunter from me, where you stole my victory point token. That sucked. Brian, your turn. Yep. Three, four, five, six. And then minus two. So it, I can get this for eight. And then I for think. Six, yeah. I don't doing? know what, else, what other token I might take. Um, probably Matt's. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's a I four. was so going to buy that card, too. I was just like, you <laughs> son of a bitch. You suck. So I you just keep the one completely green. destroyed my last turn right there. This is the totally only red card I had. And I was like, I got to give it up because there's only blue and purple left. Yeah. Like, nice. Good good play, man. Keep the one green. Keep the one green. Good play. Keep yeah, keep the one. Green. one. I don't really want it. Well, you got it. You have to. Have to. It goes into your... Your stash. My oh my gosh. All right, so you're done. Oh, it sucks. I don't have any of those. <laughs> I didn't play this game very well. Oh, I don't know. You have a lot of so, high value So ruined on that one. But Wait, could, how many? Do you have any money? You could have one stack of cards from the end. Oh. What? So you could buy a, a new Lord. See what guy came I'm going to go right to the end and maybe I'll get a monster. Yeah, that was, that was going to be... That was awesome. Uh, six plus three and nine points, man. That would have been another nine points. Yeah. I saw you grab a yellow, and I think there was only one yellow in line, and I was I got, like, no, grab it. I got hosed on that last turn. Like, when he bought that, I had the only cards left in my hand were red and purple. I didn't have enough to make a three-card combo to get any of these other ones, so <laughs> yeah, I, I had planned to buy the red, steal one of Brian's victory point tokens, and then, like, yeah, I, I, not only would I get him, I'd get one of his tokens stolen and keep mine. Yeah, you don't necessarily need to count cards, but you have to pay attention to the colors that people are. Yeah. Yeah. If people are I'd picking up a more. yellow for no apparent reason, yeah. you need to be concentrating at the multiple color oh, yeah. cards and be like, huh, I wonder what he's going yeah. for. Yeah. We would have just switched points. 
Yeah. If that had been the case, because yeah. you would have bought that, I had nothing to do here, so I would have just flipped those, and <laughs> yeah, I would have exactly done the thing, same thing, and then yeah. I would have taken that. Yeah. Another thing that we had, like we're talking about, the more cards you're spreading out onto here and ignoring, the more these tracks are getting filled. And like mm. these, those yeah. big rainbow guys, like the the five cost guys or the five color guys, like him, like I think those guys are those guys are just sort of a product of having a lot of cards in your hand because ten yeah. is not hard to get with. When you have, to have five, five cards, cards it's yeah. easy. You know, you're gonna get it. So I think those guys are sort of the product of like, I've got a crap ton of cards in my hand. I'm saving up, and then you just like, all right, time for a hand dump. I'm gonna buy this. Yeah. Like, but we were we were like limited by our hand size for so long from that one card that we were all just like, you were doing the right thing. You're going, all right, I'm gonna buy a two cost and a three cost, and like, and eventually picking like cherry picking the cards instead of taking entire stacks and just having yeah. a, fifth, a fistful of cards to to play on them. So picking the specific color because most of the time. The I was looking, I needed two different colors and those stacks were empty. Yeah. So I was just hoping people would, you know, search yeah. the depths and I would I would just pick the very first card I saw. It didn't matter what right. it was. Yeah, right. There's kind of like multiple ways to look, like to play or look at it. Like, like the single color cards are like, those are hard. They're, they're hard to get early, especially early. Like later on, Isaac just bought with money. And that was, yeah. I, I bought one blue I, card for two and that's like eight pearls. Yeah. I bought this one for a four card and six pearls. So yeah. like, Late game, they're a lot easier to get, but early game, they're almost impossible because you can't get, like, to get four, like, to get three really high purple cards, that's yeah, you'd not have a good to, chance. you have to but grab it, a stack if it's available. It's it's like real government, though. You don't want to end with a profit. Uh, so, like, I ended with a stack that I could never use, Yeah. Um, and it didn't make didn't necessarily make sense. I could have gone with one less going through the line here to grab cards grab from here, uh, grab from the council, had everything I could possibly need and not yeah. not have been so greedy about getting money. Yeah. You had an interesting game because you never even that got three keys. Was, yeah. You had the power to keep drawing pearls and then you never covered up with keys. Like that's just I figured why why yeah, lose the move. power if if I could. You're yeah. five points. That power is really close. strong, but again so it's again back to this whole a lot of the interaction is here. Yep. So he gets more power by making this full and getting all, one of each race. Yeah. But by doing that, you give everybody on the table the option to cherry pick the exact card they oh, want. Oh yeah. Yep. So it's it's well, trade off. And in uh, the my cost analysis by the end of it, by by the time I realized like none of us needed to let that happen as many no, times yeah. as it was. It was happening so often that it didn't actually matter no, if right. I did it another time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, we were all doing it enough yeah. that it didn't matter. No, but I yeah, wasn't no. saying specifically to this event. I'm just saying the general strategy of the game. Like, you should, as, like that card, you should get that happen. You get money, you get money, but you also give everyone on the table oh, yeah. the card they want. I'm sure, like I can't really specify a single time, but... And, I'm sure there was a time here or there where I'm like five for one. And five point yeah, five point cards for steal. one for uh, for yeah. one uh, pearl. That's I mean it's crazy. Yeah, it's and crazy. you can't you and can't prevent good. me from buying it. That's the other cool thing. Mm -hmm. So you take the risk by spreading Depending it out and going further. Order, yeah. Um, so like sometimes a one will go by. Like you'll be here and one will go by. You're like, well, I don't want to give everyone else the opportunity. I'll just take it and end it. But if you keep going, then oh look, a five just dropped, and now I'm gonna buy it for one. So mm -hmm. we aren't. We aren't that cutthroat, I guess. With well, no. Other, especially I'm not even saying it, it's, I think it's the more we would play it, the more we would figure yeah, out the strategy. Kind of strategy. These games are refreshing for me because I get overwhelmed with too many rules. And like, yeah, it's perfect. Uh, like Jeremy, I like numbers and more so with me, I like colors. Yeah, we, we've been playing <laughs> I like just <laughs> pretty colors. Uh, no, but like I, I understand like the the... It's it's a like everything is very well themed uh, artistically, but the theme is actually just by color and yeah, it makes and, it uh, smart, yeah. makes it quick and easy to understand. Yeah, and like these type yellow cards are pure points. Yeah, you know, it, it's just very simple. It's just good to quickly like look at the board and be like, all right, there's like three purples. I want that purple. Yeah, uh, yeah purple right. Card and like, what does it say? Oh yeah, okay, fine. Yeah, it's it's really well designed in that regard. It, it's it's absolutely and it, everybody always overuses the word elegant, but I think it's an elegant game. Yeah, as as, yeah. as card games go, it, it is elegant because it packs a lot of game into three simple. I mean, I keep saying three. Like your turn is one of three things basically. Yeah. But it does. I mean, that's basically the whole game is three. Fairly simple actions, but in those actions, there's like this huge game that kind of comes out of it. It's really good. It was really easy to pick up. Like like you said, we were all within like one one lord points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get one lord. Deficit. Like I if I I'm, had I had really bad. Uh, this was this was my end game. Yeah, for these. Yeah. 
You know, I could have I could have had a, a couple more had I paid attention earlier in the game about it. Hmm. Uh, honestly, but. the last round, uh, if I just look at the general the normal points, last round won it for me. I got this card which cost nine. It got me nine points, and I swapped this uh, location out, which I think it was going to be nine points for me, and it became thirteen points. Yep. Yeah, and, and it's the difference between you and Isaac. Like, like I would have been last points. place. I would have been last place. Nine mm -hmm. minus four. I would have been. What, what What's wrong with third? last place? No, I'm just no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying it's like no wait no, no no I'm saying take 13 <laughs> off of my 78 and yep. it would have been like a whole different yeah yeah it wouldn't have even been close to winning that's true yeah so that last turn just happened to no I noticed that you had a really good last turn yeah no I mean game. it just happened to be that I had enough pearls yeah, we all did <laughs> <laughs> damn 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 all right so I think that'll wrap it up for us guys thanks again for playing. Had a good time. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah, our good first adventure in the abyss. I know. All right, good adventure Ooh, yeah. in the abyss. Good adventure for a euro. We'll have to see how how it works out. I hope it's still uh, it's fun playing with the lawnmower. <laughs> the lawnmower. Yeah, come on, man. Give me a break. <laughs> I read it really fast. Okay? I mean, to be it fair, looks like the lawnmower. He is wearing overalls and he's probably working in a field somewhere. Oh, so he might okay. be mowing the lawn. Kelp fields. Like what fields? He's underwater. Kelp fields. It's a kelp field. Okay. Look, <laughs> it's in the background. Okay. All right. Well, thanks everybody so much for watching, and we will catch you again next time. Bye. 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 <laughs>